Hi everyone, it's four o'clock in New York. I started this show one day by saying that the bottom was calling. It wanted to know if we were there yet on day two of the president's fight over how his predecessors handled the most solemn of presidential responsibilities, the calls to families of the men and women who give their lives to protect America. It feels like the right time to re-up the question, is anything sacred? Covering a man for whom scandals and mistruths are served up in Costco-sized portions overwhelms the circuits. But here are some of the previous moments that we thought represented the bottom at the time they occurred. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. Five and a half years. He's a war PSA hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Ah, oh, I don't remember. If you look at his wife, she was standing there. She had nothing to say. She probably, maybe she wasn't allowed to have anything to say. You tell me. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even know what. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the <laughs> I can do anything. And he went out and bought a big yacht. And he had a very interesting life. I won't go any more than that because you're Boy Scouts, so I'm not going to tell you what he did. <laughs> Should I tell you? Should I tell you? You had a bunch of self-scouts, and you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag? to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! So it turns out, with this president, there's always a lower rung from which to swing. The president today again, defending his claim that past presidents hadn't called families who lost loved ones, this time invoking the death of his chief of staff, General Kelly's son. This was, again, fake news CNN. I mean, they're just a bunch of fakers. So they asked me that question. And for the most part, to the best of my knowledge, I think I've called every family of somebody that's died. And it's the hardest call to make. And I said it very loud and clear yesterday. The hardest thing for me to do is do that. Now, as far as other uh, representatives, I don't know. I mean, you could ask General Kelly, did he get a call from Obama? The White House releasing a carefully worded statement to NBC News saying that President Obama never called General Kelly. Spokesman for Presidents Obama and Bush forcefully debunked Trump's claim that they hadn't called families. Let's get to our reporters covering the latest seemingly surreal developments. Joining us is Associated Press White House reporter Jonathan Lemire, White House Journal, White House, Wall Street Journal White House reporter Eli Stokels, and at the White House, NBC's Peter Alexander. Peter, let me start with you again today because I know you've been reporting out this story. What's the yeah. latest uh, word from the White House? Well, the bottom line, I think, as you laid out well there, Nicole, is that the president again today is casting doubt on whether his predecessor, President Obama, appropriately consoled the families of fallen American service members, specifically referring to the experience of General John Kelly, whose son Robert Kelly uh, died in Afghanistan in 2010, one of 500 American soldiers killed that year. The White House basically insists that this is just being um, focused on by the media right now, that they're politicizing this issue. But be clear, it was the president who first invoked President Obama's name during that question in the Rose Garden yesterday. The White House, as you have talked about here, a spokesperson um, effectively saying, a White House official, I should say, saying that President Obama never reached out to General John Kelly. I returned a call to the White House and basically said, well, did he, did the president speak to the Kelly family in some other form? Did he visit with them privately? Did he send them a letter? I had never got a response to that question. But White House visitor records show that President Obama in May of 2011, about six months after General John Kelly's son was killed, hosted uh, a a Gold Star family's breakfast here at the White House where the Kellys were among those invited. And according to a source familiar with that breakfast, who spoke on the condition of anonymity because it was a private breakfast, tells me that the Kelly parents, John Kelly and his wife, were seated at the table with the First Lady, Michelle Obama, at the time. The bottom line, it would have been easy for President Trump on this day when asked during a round robin of radio um, interviews about the topic to say nobody wants to, to be fighting 
fighting over this. It's the gravest of obligations for any president. Peter, why Let's would they say, say that? This is a man who relished in a fight with the Golds. I mean, I mean, yes, that would be the logical thing to say if you're a logical person, but why would anyone think that Donald Trump, who relished in, I think, an almost two-week fight with the Khan family after the Democrats, I mean, this to me seems more like a pattern of his to disparage and, and, and this, this pa I mean, we aired those clips not because anyone needs to see them again, but to be re reminded that nothing is sacred and that this isn't about reaching the bottom. We will fall forever. But but why why does anyone doubt that? I, I mean, I, I've come to the conclusion that this is a White House strategy. Yeah, no, to be very clear, this is a president. We've witnessed it. All those examples were examples of places where the president never backed down, even when it and a simple apology might have been a simple way out of it. It's just not the way he works. He will fight to the end. As one White House official privately told me a matter of months ago, they said, this guy loves the fight. He smells blood. He loves the smell of blood. This was not in the context of what we're talking about now, but that is the way the president views things. It's him against everybody else. And even in this circumstance, about the responsibility of presidents to comfort the families of the fallen, it's a place where the president feels when his back's against the wall, he simply needs to fight. Eli Stokels, do you get the sense from talking to your sources that this is a strategy that's been greenlit on the staff side as well, that they've nodded their heads and agreed that having Donald Trump continue to question what his predecessors did in response to um, families who would lost loved ones serving and protecting this country is a good strategy? Well, it's really hard to say. John Kelly was not in the Rose Garden for the joint press conference earlier this afternoon. Make of that what you will. But also, as Peter pointed out, this was a statement, a confirmation that came from the White House press shop when they started to get the questions that basically the president had planted with the media, ask John Kelly if President Obama called him. When the White House was asked about that, they willingly put out on background uh, that President Obama had not called General Kelly back in 2010 Eli, after the president death of his Obama son. Have called Mrs. Kelly? Well, we know that the, the Kellys were at that Gold Star uh, family breakfast at the White House. I've talked to some folks uh, in national security circles who know General Kelly very well, and they have a hard time imagining that he's okay with the, the politicization of this at this point. It's c easy to sort of go back and think and imagine him relaying the information or telling the president some story about this. And the question can fairly be asked, uh, but John Kelly's not answering at this point how he feels. We just know that he's the chief of staff of a White House that seems to be pushing this out as a strategy. And a president who compulsively, as you pointed out, Nicole, always makes it about himself, even when he's trying to talk about how to best honor uh, Gold Star families. He's getting into this, this compare and contrast between himself and President Obama. And that stands in stark contrast to the speech that Kelly himself gave uh, just days after his son's death, when he spoke uh, really movingly about the pluralism of our armed forces, about the courage and bravery of our men and women in uniform. There was no mention of his own individual grief. This is a guy talking about what what unites us as a country and not about his own personal feelings. And now he is in service of a president who, as we're seeing, uh, and, tends to do the opposite. And Nicole, ahead, to that point, as Eli was saying, it was during that very speech just days after General Kelly's own son died that, as first reported by the Washington Post in covering that event, General Kelly, as the Post reports, told the individual, the Marine, who would be introducing him, please don't bring up my son's death here. It's clear the way John Kelly feels about what was just a, a terrible moment in he and his wife's, their whole family's life. And you can only imagine that it's not a topic he wants to be revisiting, certainly under these circumstances right now. We've reached out to the White House requesting an interview with John Kelly to see how he feels about his son's name being invoked in a political context like this today. Um, unclear whether that interview will occur, whether he'll be available to speak to us today. Worth also noting that I'm told by White House officials that President and Trump. This all started when the president was asked why he hadn't spoken uh, more publicly or publicly at all, frankly, about the death of four American soldiers, including Green Berets, who died in Niger. Now, almost two weeks ago, the president said that he'd written letters that hadn't been sent yet, that he likes to call all the families that he would likely do that. I'm told by White House officials they are those calls to the four families are on his schedule for today. And the letters, I was told, were to have been sent out this morning. Interesting that doing a round of conservative talk radio interviews in which he attacks his predecessors and John McCain came first. Uh, Jonathan Lemire, let me ask you, I heard from two people 
close to Trump, but not inside the White House staff, that, that the strategy behind the, the, the interview that Tom Barrick did with Michael Kranish of the Washington Post last week and others is to scream at their top at the top of their lungs to this president through the things that he sees, which is the media about him, that they can't get through to him, that what they feel like has been lost is any attempt on his part to govern beyond the 32 percent. Do you have any reporting that suggests that the president is now all in on being the leader of the 32 percent? I think he's very concerned about the base. We have reporting that suggests that he has told people around him that he feels like he's worried a little bit about the ramifications of the Chuck and Nancy deal, of backing the wrong candidate in the Alabama Senate race, that he is concerned about the Steve Bannon insurgency to attack some of the Republican uh, place Republican incumbents when he feels like I might be on the wrong side of that if there's some success if there are Roy successful. Moore contest going exactly for right. Bannon's candidate not his exactly right now we also know that in this case well dating back from the campaign advisors have tried to reach him through the media that they've thought that the best way to get him is to get to place an interview with Fox and Friends to give an interview to a publication he reads that that's a way to break through and to actually he'll respond better to that than in a meeting where his attention span is known to be known to be short and also here let's remember this is a president that no matter how inaccurate his statement might be or how insensitive a statement might be he does not apologize he has told people around him that is one of his cardinal rules do not apologize yesterday he felt that the questions about why haven't you called the families of these soldiers, that these were a criticism. That because he had known, he was golfing all weekend. He golfed both days in his golf course in Virginia last weekend. And he did not call these soldiers. We know those calls are being made today. We know those letters are being made today. But in that moment, that when he was taking that kind of questioning, he does what he so often does, deflect it. Overwhelms the circuits, but here are some of the previous moments that we thought represented the bottom at the time they occurred. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war PSW hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. And now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. If you look at his wife, she was standing there. She had nothing to say. She probably, maybe she wasn't allowed to have anything to say. You tell me. But you know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. <laughs> I don't even know it. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab him by the <laughs> I can do anything. He went out and bought a big yacht. And he had a very interesting life. I won't go any more than that because you're Boy Scout, so I'm not going to tell you what he did. <laughs> Should I tell you? Should I tell you? And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, get that son of a bitch off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! So it turns out, with this president, there's always a lower rung from which to swing. The president today again defending his claim that past presidents hadn't called families who lost loved ones, this time invoking the death of his chief of staff, General Kelly's son. This was, again, fake news CNN. I mean, they're just a bunch of fakers. So they asked me that question, and for the most part, to the best of my knowledge, I think I've called every family of somebody that's died, and it's the hardest call to make, and I said it very loud and clear yesterday. The hardest thing for me to do is do that. Hi, everyone. It's 4 o'clock in New York. I started this show one day by saying that the bottom was calling. It wanted to know if we were there yet. On day two of the president's fight over how his predecessors handled the most solemn of presidential responsibilities, the calls to families of the men and women who give their lives to protect America, it feels like the right time to re-up the question, is anything sacred? Covering a man for whom scandals and mistruths are served up in Costco-sized portions